So a filmmaker. That's interesting, you know. So the business the business element of that is quite key and clear. Like you have to network, you have to get to know people. People have to know you and see your work, and one job gets to the next one. But in terms of learning, how do you do that? Sort of what makes you progress? How you start from being able to cut a trailer to a scene, from a scene to a commercial to this and that. What? How did you learn all of this stuff? I think time. Mm. I think time. You got to keep doing it and practicing. And it's like bu- building a vocabulary, or it's a it's a whole way of thinking, editing. And you get better at it the more you practice it, as with anything. Um, I can't draw from examples because it's just such a natural thing with anything. The more you do it, the better you become. You become more fluent at it. Um, and I'm still learning. I have so much to still learn. I know that. And I think the more <laughs> the more I know, the more I know I don't like. There's more stuff I don't know yet. I, I want to talk about this very interesting concept you mentioned that editing is a language it's, and the way you perceive it is almost like writing, you know? Yeah. And you have a few tricks and few ideas that could simplify it to people because people think it's just... Editing one video Editing, the cutting other. clips and mixing and matching. But like, what, how do you sort of simplify it and enlighten? Obviously, it's more than just that. It's it's re it's a really powerful tool. I mean, it's it's. I think of editing as a as a sentence or a paragraph. That's how you manipulate hearts and minds. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Just, powerful just tool. Just write write a haiku basically with images, and I'll explain how. <laughs> Shots are like words, and what you do and how you put those words next to each other, they form sentences, and you and you try to say something with that, and by manipulating the time of shots and when you show a shot it's like adding commas and full stops and adding spacing and breathing time to shots you really control the audience and where they go with the story and keeping them entertained or trying to make them feel a certain thing all you're doing is putting shot next to each other choosing the right sound and how long the shots are there on screen for and knowing how to use all these elements together you can really you can really drive an audience to feel something or tell them inform them something important do you want to do the Kushlov effect? Like yeah, you had yeah, an interesting yeah. story of the Kushlov effect. It sounds yeah. very simple, but it's very w- interesting visual story yeah. way. I to think it's understand. Kushlov effect or Kushlov effect. I can't remember. And it's Kushlov. 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 Is that really a, it? No idea. No, I just made it up. <laughs> I was like, wow, Arabs have a, like the Russian version of the Kushlov. I just li- Libyanized his name basically. Yeah. So the, this this is a Soviet filmmaker, propaganda filmmaker. And he kind of, the OG of editing, let's say, kind of understanding editing and the power of editing. Because he kind of explained the phenomenon of the the impact of editing. And he did this experiment where he he had a couple of shots in his library. Like a shot of a man just looking straight at the camera. Just right down the barrel, no reaction, just a straight face. Just still. And he cut that, that shot with a shot of a a baby and then he cut back to the same shot of the man and he showed that to an audience of people in the film and people said oh wow it looks like the man is looking at a cute baby he's reacting he's thinking the baby is cute just by showing an image of a man cut to a baby cut back to a man and that was like wow okay that's you know that it looks like it's cute okay that's doesn't prove anything really, does it? However, he did the same shot, took the same shot of a man just looking straight down the camera, no reaction. This time he cut it with kind of a woman in a kind of a seductive kind of stance or you know, kind of an alluring moment and then cut back to the guy. And just by seeing that kind of shot of man, shot of woman, shot of man, it made the look, man look creepy. So people walked out of the cinema, different people would say, wow, that guy looked creepy. He just like stared at that woman. <laughs> <laughs> just by intercutting with a female doing something it kind of you know gave that effect and he did the same thing again to a different audience except he didn't cut with a woman or a baby this time this time he cut it with uh, a coffin and then back to the guy he put that in the film and people said wow that guy looked really sad you know <laughs> So he went from being a pervert to a person who loves kids to a person who's sad. You got all these kind of, you know, mindsets with just cutting between the same shot to an object. And I thought that was amazing, you Mm -hmm. know, seeing how you can 
it's, it's so simple. These tools are simple. And the more you study them, the more you experiment, the more you hold a shot for longer, the you keep it shorter, keep stuff away from the audience, you know, tease them with some shots. It takes me to an interesting point of constantly thinking of who's watching this, who's the audience. Does it matter who's the audience or is it, does it matter that you are thinking of an audience? Of course. And they're, the they're all going to think, they're all going to relate the same. Or is your audience kind of specific depending on the project? Do you, I guess, long story short, do you imagine the audience and how they look like, where they're from, how they feel in your room as you cut every time? Yeah, yeah, you have to. Uh, it's a big part of the job. It depends on what you're editing. If I'm if I'm doing something for kids, I've done, you know, com TV commercials with kids' toys. You watch them as an adult, this is probably cheesy. But for a kid, it's like, wow. My Little Pony, she has a, te the dad has a My Little Pony tail. You know, like for a kid, it's like, whoa, that's so magical for a girl. Like, I can't believe the dad has a My Little Pony tail. <laughs> and I say, yeah, we've, I do a lot of kids commercials and they are a whole different mindset. And you want to step back and think of it, you know, you're not being serious. You're trying to entertain, you're trying to say something. And completely different with adults. If I make a little documentary, or I'm trying to hone in on a point, mm -hmm. respecting the adult's intelligence. Mm -mm. You know, let them figure things out on their own. Um, for kids, mm -mm. show them colors. Show, you know, mm -mm. gonna be a bit more obvious.